Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of To Be Really. I forgot to ask you if you are ready, Zen. Are you ready, Zen? I am ready. Well, perfect, because here we are in To Be Released. Uh, we're here, everyone, and we're here to do another episode. And this time, Zen did not take a nap before uh, <laughs> recording. Didn't take a nap. Made it this time. Yes, and we're glad to have him on. He's uh, technically the only guest, even though he is technically my co-host. So that doesn't mean... Yeah. Anyway, let's get into it. Today, we're going to finally stop uh, beating around the bush, and we're going to talk about LR Cell. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's get into him. So he's the leader. His leader skill is for the Android Cell Saga. It's four key, uh, attack 150%. And HP 150%, then defense 170%. And then for extreme int, it's 3 key and 120%. And then his passive skill is uh, attacking defense 80%, raises defense up to 80%. The more HP remaining, the greater defense boost. Plus an additional key, plus 1 in attack, plus 20% per existing enemy. And evolve when conditions are met. And his, his condition for his active skill is you have to be at 30% HP or less. And then he turns into Perfect Cell. And he fully recovers his HP. He gets key plus 4, attack and defense 120%. Plus an additional attack and defense 20% with 4 or more key spears obtained. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 20% uh, when key is 6 uh, or more. Uh, no, when 6 key spears or more. And then another attack 20% if it's 8 key spears obtained. Then he has an active skill where he greatly raises his attack temporarily, causes ultimate damage to enemy, and massively lowers defense, can be activated when facing only one enemy, starting from the third turn after evolution once only. And then his categories are Resurrected Warrior, for Full Power, Androids, Transformation Boost, Time Travelers, Artificial Life Forms, Android Slash Cell Saga, and Kamiamiha. There you go, that's Cell, in a, nut in a nutshell. Um... Uh, so right off the bat, I will say his animations are very pretty, just like Gohan. They both have very pretty animations. They do. Um, the part that kind of rubs basically everyone the wrong way is that uh, his active skill is way too low to activate on almost 90% of any content in Dokkan. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. <laughs> And then, unfortunately, his active skill, which also, again, has a very good animation because it basically plays out what if he beat Gohan and he blows up the Earth, and it's very cool. The problem is that if he's transformed, the, the fight is not going to last very much longer. You're not going to wait three turns and activate that skill again. That's just not oh, happening. Oh, God, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> if he transforms, you should be fine. Yeah, that should be basically the end of the fight. The only time that's not going to be the case is if you're in the Legendary Goku event, and that's literally the only thing in the entire world where I could see you using his active skill if you're not on purpose trying to have a bad team or something. Uh, another thing about him is I think his leader skill, it ended up being really weird because Android slash Cell Saga, it turned out that only really the new units they were releasing were any good for it. Because it turned out a bunch of the old Android uh, cell cell users. Well, Tech Cell is really good for it. Yeah, okay. You're right. Tech Cell is very good for that team. But that's also because he got an easy A, so that's why he has like a recent update. But every other unit on Android slash Cell Saga is pretty old. Even LR Gohan with the bad walk animation. Who's good, but also he's an LR, so you have to actually pull him. It ended up being that the, whenever I look at him. this... Hmm? You have to actually get him? Yeah, which is unfortunate. Uh, it seems like they are working on... There's like some other free-to-play options, and there's a bunch of other stuff in it. I should also mention, uh, the thing that Cell shoots out of him at one point, we can't mention, because it creates weird video recommendations. So we're not going to be allowed to actually talk about uh, those... The the the, the little, little dude who ends up powering him up, we can't talk about him at all. Wait... Wait, the the suffix puts weird recommendations in? Yep. I my brother pointed, <laughs> pointed this out to me, so we can't say it. That's so weird. It is very weird, but here we are. It's um, not even like the B word. That's just like Yeah, weird. So it also means that a large amount of people I can't mention 
such as Piccolo in his youth, which hopefully youth wasn't enough to trigger it again, because that would suck. And we also can't bring up Garlic. I can't finish the rest of Garlic's name, so his name will just That's be Garlic. That's so funny. YouTube's on some weird shit. Yes, it is. Check out our previous video where we talk about, about the analytics of my YouTube channel to learn how weird YouTube is. It's a weird place. Um, anyway, that was what I was saying. This the, the 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 category itself ends up being. I feel like if you were if you joined in and pulled on both those banners, you're fine. But if you got unlucky in any sense of the case and you only got sell, then you're kind of in a case of like. Well, I can get that new Krillin, I can get that new 18, and I got other free-to-play options because it turned out that a lot of the actual existing units for the category need to be easy aid. I think the Super Saiyan 2 STR Gohan is pretty good, too. But that's something Oh, that new to, one? Yeah, you have to wait for him to get his easy aid first to actually use him. Because as he is now... Yeah, like, the free Goku that turns into Gohan is pretty good. Yes, he is. Uh, the Vegeta and Trunks, uh, not super good in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, I, the Vegeta and Trunks, not as good as Goku and Gohan. No, not which not is as fitting. <laughs> Very fitting. That is a card that also suffered from the fact that they wanted to be as canon as possible, and it completely fucked over the card. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, kind of, which is what I'll say is kind of the problem with a lot of the cards that were released this set is that they were trying to be too like. Yeah, a Cell needs to have less than 30% HP. It's like, well, fuck. That means it's never happening then. <laughs> yeah, it's really not. No. Uh, and then when he, once he's transformed, again, he's super powerful. But good good luck trying to get him there. And also, I think in his base form, when he's not transformed, he's just not... He doesn't seem to... And I guess maybe this is bad because I was using him next to Tech Cell, and my Tech Cell is like Rainbow Star. And Tech Cell was like putting out so much more damage than him that it kind of made me bummed out. <laughs> no, mine uh, hits pretty hard. Does he? Okay. You're going to be yeah. the actual barometer for him because you actually ha were able to pull him. Yeah, well, I, I got him and two dupes. Well, there you and go. And he, he hits pretty hard. All right, fair Not enough. Not like crazy hard, but he hits pretty hard. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of sell. What what are you what are you feeling about him? Uh, he's fine. I don't I don't like Cell as a character mm -hmm. at all. So like it's hard to be excited, but I really like super attacks in Dokkan where they just throw hands and just like just smack the shit out of you instead yeah. of key blasts. So I really like his default super. So I, I like him. I would say a good four point five out of five. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna lean towards a a three out of five. His animations are just so good that it doesn't matter. Like in terms of a unit, I don't think I'd ever he would not be my go to kind of use for him. Even for Android slash Cell as a leader, I would probably still want to use Krillin or something, and then get like like using two of them doesn't feel like it's the the right move for me. But at the same time, like oh, see, I don't use his team. I use him on Gohan's. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. It's funny because his team is the only way to get Android 16 on there and then actually he gets some form of boost. You know what's fucked up actually? That I realized that this is what Dokkan did. It's really fucked up. So the Easy A Gohan, under his new leader skill, he's the 100% lead for Kamehameha. But then also he has a rainbow lead. So Android 16 can be put under it. That's fucked up. It's super fucked up. I was like, you assholes. You made it so he could run. He could be worked with the wrong leader. Yeah, I don't even use Android 16. I just gave up on trying to make that shit work. That's I just fair. said, fuck it. But also, he doesn't like feel as restrictive as Gohan, where Gohan feels slightly more restrictive, where you have to always bring in an Android. For Cell, it's just, if you get below 30%, if that shit ever happens, congrats, you get a unit. Which I think is... Uh... Again, it's a half and half on if it's good, but I preferred it. I, I like the fact that he doesn't force you to use any units that you wouldn't already use on the team or something, like with Gohan. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I don't, Gohan doesn't necessarily do that because you can still trigger his transformation without 16. Yeah, it's the it's also the Android part, which is the part I'm also saying. Like, no matter what, if you want to see him transform, you have to include an Android or you have to be fighting an Android. So if he's on a team well, like... Well, you have to include an Android saga. Yeah. So, like, the free Goku works. No, it has to be Android. 
I'm, I'm 90% sure it's Android Saga, because I've definitely transformed him with no cell on the field. Well, let me double check. Thankfully, we have an actual thing on my face in my face <laughs> that will tell us the answer. I, I feel like I feel like I've transformed him with just the uh, the other Gohan, the other LR Gohan, and a Goku on the field before. An existing Androids category ally, so not Android slash Cell. So they don't have to be on the same uh, uh, on the same. They have to just be on the team somewhere, not actually in the um, rotation. So it has to be an Android, or you have to be fighting an Android. So that's how it works. It's doing it. Okay. Yeah. Tasia. Sorry, say that one more time. I feel you cut off. Hello? Zen? I'm here. You just cut out for like five straight minutes to the okay. point of being unhearable. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> we solved the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan thing. Anyway, that's a 3 out of 5 for me, and you got a 4.5 for your cell. So that puts him yep. to a 4? Let's say that's yeah, how math about, works and say. Four. Yeah. Let's say how that's how map works, and we'll say he's at a four. That's a four out of five on the big boy scale, all things considered. Now, let's quickly look into some questions, because we got a good amount of them, because D Free was kind enough to retweet, and I also got 65 sweet likes from it. There you go, baby. That's how you get beautiful. (laughs) Form those points. Exactly. Uh, so let's hopefully, let's see, let's, I hope we can get all these, but let's, uh, let's see. First question comes in from Nighthawk who says, can you share another mod story? Uh, Zen, can you quickly remember any mod stories that we have not already told? Um, we talked about the guy who tried to stage a coup, right? I think we, I don't think we've ever actually talked about what happened with him. I think we've always just kind of mentioned his name and just kind of laughed at it. I think we're free to actually share that story now that both of us don't work uh, under the Reddit anymore. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's a good story. There you go. Um, do you remember his actual name? It's, I, it's, Griever. it's Griever, right? That's like, right. I think it's Paul's necklace. Yeah. If anyone remembers from Pokemon Yellow, Griever, <laughs> the, the specific arc where we talk about Griever. Uh, Griever was a mod who was on for, what is he, what, what the fuck was he there for? For C, CS stuff? Uh, like art assets. He was there for art assets. Okay. Um, one day I forget what the hell triggered it. I want to say he was just talking to fish. No, here's what happened is that he went onto the actual discord where none of the mods are actually at. Cause at the time we were all on the line app. The actual, like, uh, Dokkan mods were all online, and then he went onto the Dokkan subreddit Discord, and then he assumed that those mods were the mods that were actually on the team, and he thought that we were a bunch of disrespectful assholes. <laughs> Which, to be fair, I think Mayo was in there, so he was half right <laughs> in terms of... <laughs> he was at least kind of right, yeah. He was kind of right. But the point is, is that he saw Discord mods, and he thought he was a subreddit mods, and he saw, he, he he was not at the quality that he expected, uh, so what he did is I want to say he asked Cornell how to take a CS stuff because I feel like that's the only way that this happens. Is no, I think Cornell was teaching him how to do it. Okay. Con- and then he he like went to fish after he got mad at the Discord mods and demanded that the sub be turned over to him. Yes. To like save it. That is correct. And then what happened afterwards is that fish kind of I want to say laughed and said no. <laughs> Uh, effectively yes <laughs> he didn't he didn't laugh in his face obviously he just said that ain't happening but in my mind fish kind of chuckled at the thing that he was just said at and said no that ain't happening uh and then griever took it upon himself to actually st- take all of our uh code for the actual reddit and then run away with it and then yep and then what happened afterwards was the giant shitstorm where Konell came in and said, all this shit is gone. And we were like, what do you mean? Yep. And then he, he brought it back up. And then I remember the guy said he was going to sue us for using his art, art assets that yeah. he made, even though it was just copy and pasted uh, <laughs> Dokkan art that was already yep. existing. It was already existing Dokkan art. And then uh, from that point on, I then want to say that's where that uh, other subreddit came from. The one I can't remember the name of, but it was basically made of just people who were banned off the actual Reddit. Yeah, it was. He, there was like a revenge Reddit, and it was literally just everybody that was banned from the 
Yes, every single person that was banned, including he even made one mod of a guy who was like constantly got on our shit, and he was eventually banned because he kept he didn't know the word like stop attacking other users, you asshole, and he refused to stop. And then he eventually got uh, paid a perma ban from our Reddit. He went to Griever's Reddit, became a mod, and then Re- Griever kicked him off. <laughs> Yep, because he was still shitty. And that's kind of the that's the that's the one big one. So if you ever wondered like what was up with all that drama stuff happened is like that's literally what happened. There's a that, that at least from our side that's what uh we'll say. And since we're the winners of that war, we get to decide how <laughs> the yeah. people... history goes to the winner. So that's on our side. What a weird time. It, it was so it's so weird to think about all the fucking dumbass drama that ever happened on the Reddit. And how it, oh, it was endless. It was just fucking endless. It was fucking endless. All the the fucking, I I still think like uh, it still doesn't beat out the um. Oh God, what it? So if if anyone watching does any, you know, wish you tell, we should say why there were dolphin noises in the first modcast. Do you think that's okay to tell that story? I don't remember that story. So uh, well. I remember the dolphin noises, but I don't 100% remember why we did them. So okay. you'll have to tell it. I'll tell it. So here's the basic way as it goes. So people back in the day, I believe his – I forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his name. It's not out of disrespect. It's literally because I can't 100% remember. It was Ichigo? Remember? The YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Living Ichigo? Living Ichigo. Okay, so – um we were having some weird beef back then because someone stole his account and i believe he assumed it was someone on the reddit oh i remember that yeah he got back when they didn't have any security on the accounts his yeah. shit got stolen yeah so he lost his account and he wasn't you know just fucking fought. yeah so he assumed someone on the reddit po- could have possibly done it and then this started an entire flame war where it was like us talking about it and it got real into some real dark places because there's also people attacking him for his cosplay which is was going above him it was going too far at that point it was like don't attack this man's look <laughs> come on yeah we were... going after this dude's like life Nah, fuck that based on what he said that was fine but if you're going after his actual person then you're not actually attacking what he's thinking and that's not cool uh but basically he went on to a video which i believe it was with bardock at the time bardock obama is that how you pronounce his name uh, yes <laughs> i sometimes forget that it's like bardock obama but you know everyone knows this bardock. is the only time you've ever cared about pronunciation i've only cared just because i don't want it because again we at the in the past we had beef and i don't want to say like this is coming in a place of beef i want to be as respectful as possible i'm just telling the story <laughs> I don't feel any negative negativity towards them at all. And also, you, I think, want to say you're, like, cool with Bardock, too. You share Yu Yu Hakusho beams on Twitter. I'm cool so. with Bardock and Ichigo. I like them both. Exactly. So we're this is just sharing a story. So nobody take this as us or me trying to attack them. Anyway, so they did a video together, and um, Ichigo used some words. I don't remember what he used, but he used some terrible phrasing of something. And then Bardock says... It's okay. We're gonna go back into that video, and then we're just gonna replace it with. Uh, we're gonna replace. We're gonna censor it out so that it doesn't offend anyone. And then someone in the chat said, Did "This guy just really said he was just gonna go back and do some fucking uh, dolphin noises in the background." <laughs> <laughs> and so it started doing it in the light chat where everyone started using the dolphin and saying, "Hey, how the are you?" And then this started this whole dolphin. Oh yeah, the SpongeBob dolphin. <laughs> yeah. So we were said like when he said like I'm gonna censor it a little bit, and we were said what are you gonna do? Put the fucking oh, he's gonna put the SpongeBob dolphin noise, and then that started a running gag where every time we put a dolphin, we knew it was the SpongeBob dolphin noise. So then on the first episode of Modcast, I put a bunch of dolphin noises in it in reference to that very thing, which was an inner reference to what we do, and no one else knew. Everyone knew it as a SpongeBob reference, and only we knew it as like an actual like. It was a callback joke. joke. Yeah. Yeah, for that. An in joke to this one video they did where I don't even remember what they said 100%. But that's where the dolphin noise came from. And since then, dolphin has just kind of been around. And it's been great. And again, now times have passed. Look how times have changed. Now you're both cool with Ichigo and Bardock. Mm hmm. Yeah. Good guys. Good guys. So, yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that mod story. And now let's go on to the next question. Uh, next question comes in from Bolnaret. This is also the uh, the dude who got to win his Let Me Play Whatever Game uh, You Want, and it was Mega Man X. So he's the reason why Mega Man X is on the channel, so thank you for that. I get to lose a whole bunch, and that sucks, because old games are hard. 
<laughs> Are you bad at Mega Man? I'm Mega Man X. I'm doing fine. You should see. Uh, it it kind of goes in between. I kind of like uh, cheesed uh, Chill Penguin. I just kind of <laughs> went on top of this. Uh, I went on top of the wall. I used this wall slid for three minutes until he died. <laughs> So there you go. Uh, his question is: If you designed LR Gohan and Cell, what would their details be like? Um, I guess this the basic thing is like the only thing I would change is just the active skill requirements for Cell. I would probably put it down to put it up to around fifty percent, and then keep everything else. And then for Gohan, I just remove the Android stuff because other other than that, I think they're perfectly fine. I don't mind an HP requirement. Uh, because I also think that not every unit has to be built for like being able to be Dokkan Fest fights, because every unit can beat a Dokkan Fest fight. Yeah, Dokkan Fest fights don't fucking matter. No. So I think 50% is fair on harder events. Uh, 30% is a little too low, and at that point you risk the uh, you run the risk of actually dying. So I'd say 50%, and then, yeah, I think that's fair. And because he does a full heal, it still kind of hurts because you have to run Gohan and Gohan. If you use his active skill first, Gohan has a harder time using his active skill and stuff like that. So, you know, still works. That's kind of the change I'd make. How, how about you, Phil? How would you, how would you do it? Uh, I'm about the same. I don't really see a need to change anything else, really. All right. Fair. Thank you for the question, Bulnerat. Um... Next question comes from Most Creative Name. I think six months... It, in it would be great to check what your favorite OST in the game is. Um, for Dokkan, it is B Pan's theme when she uses her active skill. <laughs> All right, it's uh, the best piece of music in Dokkan. I want to say it's the only piece of Dokkan music I think I've ever heard. Yeah, I I don't know any. I can't answer this question. That's fair. If you want to get an actual deep dive into OST, ask D for you. I want to say every single time there's a new OST out. Um, he specifically listens to it and then kind of goes, is this old? No, I think this is new. All right. I'm feeling <laughs> it. <laughs> and that's uh... a <laughs> shout out to D free, the homie. He's real good. Check out his videos. <laughs> Go subscribe to D free's channel. <laughs> uh, next question comes in from Constellar Phoenix, who says, who would you choose to be your lover? D free or Zenrot? Um, so Zen, how do you feel about this one? Uh, D free, obviously. I mean, I heard what he would do to a Klondike bar, so I'm going to go with Zen Run. <laughs> That's true. There's some risk involved. One hundred percent. Um, I'm going to read these. Uh, uh, thank you for the question. I'm going to read these Warble G questions, even though I disagree with them. Uh, he says, "Why are all Wesker players carried and terrible people?" And then his other question is, was Nerg never good? Ryu players were just better than us and figured him out? That is, that, those are his two questions. <laughs> Actually, the second one I kind of agree with because it's funny. Um, the first one I'll say is because um, you just need to get good or play Morgan. How about that? If you got a problem with Wesker, just play Morgan. I play Morgan and I still hate Wesker. You beat Wesker though, don't you? Uh, you play uh, the I don't know about all that now. All right, tell me how you lose, because I need to figure out this matchup of specifically Morgan with the Morgan. <laughs> well, well, I don't play I don't play Fat Boy Morgan anymore. I just play um, the four team. Uh huh. But basically, with Wesker, well, one, the four team sucks against Dark Destruction because you can nuke anyone that I have except for Tigrex with it. Okay. And uh, against Ouroboros, it, it's pretty much just like, did you overwhelm him early, and did you negate False Throne? If it's no to either one of those, you lose. Mm, I see. Unless you manage to fuck him over and steal the the guy he's reviving. Yeah. If you steal the guy, he's revive looping. He's just fucked. Yeah, it's true. That's uh, again. That's why I feel like. Um, and again, it's specific. Don't get me wrong. Against every other person that is not named Morgan, Wesker's pretty much easily beats all of them. Um, but also if he's running Oro, you have, there's a chance for him to brick and not get anything in his graveyard. And if that happens, then you have a very small window of time to actually beat the shit out of them. But if your entire strategy re revolves around like getting one unit to deal damage to him, then you're never going to beat him. That's just like the, that's the cold hard facts of this case is that, uh, there's too much destruction on the field. So I don't know. Uh, I don't think they're carried. I just think that black is too good. 
And also Wesker's skills are all like the opposite of Nergigante, where Wesker has, I think, no bad skills. He has one skill that's kind of okay, and then two skills that are fucking amazing. Yeah, I think the uh the what do you call the one where he puts the revenge unit in the X pocket is not that good. No, it's not very good, especially with the way the current meta is based around explore cards it's too easy to fuck over somebody and like like if you're playing against a morgan that puts that shitty counter into your deck into your ex pocket then congrats then you've lost an ex pocket yeah and it's it's hard to play without your fucking ex pocket man yeah it's true uh and as for were nerd players better um i'm gonna assume that you just took this verbatim from a ryu player nerd was always amazing don't let a Ryu player yeah, tell you otherwise. Yeah, I hate the fuck. Oh, uh, no one else knew what they were doing. I'm just really good. Everyone else sucked. He was never OP. It's like, shut up, idiot. Yeah, it's it's the it's the most like, I don't know how everyone else is having a problem with it. I'm doing fine. Like, yeah, because you play the matchup that wins. Like, of course you're doing fine. It's yes. Fucking stupid. Very dumb. It's like saying um, Wesker's not a problem when you only play Morgan and the Wolf Pack. It's like, well, you're playing a deck that's very specifically sometimes is able to completely shut down one Wesker deck. Yeah, yeah, Wesker is dumb. It, it, like, it's annoying when pe- people one deck. Like, ugh, it's annoying because like, who gives a shit if they have beat everybody else in the game? Like. Yeah. Dude, you also cut off a little bit there because I want to say my internet's going bad, but I think we understood your rage against <laughs> what what you were saying. Yeah, just just when you want to talk about balance, don't talk from the standpoint of only playing one deck. Exactly, you have to play multiple ones. Next question comes from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan, who says, "Which four star are you going to pick from uh, Fate Go?" Mine is Artoria Lancer Alter because she is the Goku Black of Artoria Lancers, which is a really funny thing to say. Um, you don't uh, obviously you don't care about uh, Fake Grand Order um, Zen, but uh, they do this thing occasionally where they just let you pick a free four star. They just give you a ticket and say, "Here you go, pick basically any four in the game, and it's yours." And it's like, okay, cool. So they released that ticket recently, and so people are currently trying to decide which four they want. And I'm kind of with Super Saiyan God Johan here. I'm going to go with the Alter Lady. Arturia Lancer Alter. Right. Uh, because she's cool. Uh, she also has... Um, she has very good armor. She has cool-ass armor. So if you don't want to do the extremely lewd version of her, then you can just wear the rockin' ass armor and be done with it. And then on her very fa- final ascension, she has the most craziest underboob of any character I've ever seen. And that's the <laughs> exact mode I'll be running her in. So... <laughs> Can't wait to get her. Also because her other version is a 5 and that's basically impossible to pull because it's story locked. So, yeah, I'm going to be going with her. So there you okay, go. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Next question comes in from Super Bright Adrian who says, How did your Nero Fest grind go? Um, so I think overall I got around 45 boxes which is around, I want to say, I think I want to say by the end of it, I had around 21,000 petals to just use on the lottery at the end. Uh, and that it comes with around six out. No, not six hours of grinding. It's way more than that. At least 10 hours of grinding near the end of it. <laughs> it was a lot of grinding at the end. And I would have grounded, grinded more, but I had work. So that kind of put a stop to it. So there you go. That was my final total. Uh, and finally, we'll get to questions where that Zen can answer. We get from Teal, Team Team Yell Asin. What is the worst feeling in Dokkan? Uh, Zen, what do you feel? The worst? Yes, the worst feeling in Dokkan. Oh, the worst feeling, not yes. the worst unit. No. Um, I, it's never happened to me, but I watched this dude... On uh, Twitter, he put up a Twitter video where he had the transformed Super Saiyan, t- and he used like an entire stock of items on it just to see how much damage he would do. And the boss, yes, and then the boss was Ultra Instinct Goku from the final yeah, the hardest yeah. stage, 
and he dodged it. Yep, and it fucking dodged it. Oh, that was rough because that Gohan had a lot of attack. <laughs> yeah, he used uh, he literally used like eight items, and, and that, that's like, oh, yeah, that sucks. Fighting at dodge bosses in Dokkan are extremely unfun. They're maybe the most unfun bosses uh, in the entire game. Uh, Hy- 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 Hydrogeton, I think is his name. It's not Hydrogeton. Hydrogeton and um, Janemba come are you to try- mind. Are you talking about Harutagard? Yes. <laughs> are you trying to say Harutagard? My bad. Harutagard and Janemba come to mind for Dokkan Fest. They're extremely easy fights that constantly dodge you. But then that Ultra Instinct Goku at the end of the Goku event can also dodge you, and that's a pain in the ass. So, and one time I was fighting against what the hell's his name, Disposito, Dispo, the Rabbit Man. Dispo. Dispo. Okay, so I was fighting Dispo, and the first time I fought Dispo in the um, battlefield, he never dodged me once. And when I was doing my second run through, where I was like, "Well, the only problem I had was Majin Buu, and now I beat him, so let's get this done." He dodged every single one of my attacks and killed me. And I was the most frustrated I'd ever been with Dokkan. <laughs> I was like, this guy's not hard. He literally just dodged everything. It was such a bullshit feeling. Um, other than that, this is something similar, which hasn't happened to me, but it's hap- I've seen happen to D Free and now Goresh. It is the idea of pulling a dupe LR that you don't need and then having to deal with people going... Oh, yeah, that's no fun. Yeah, and then having to go with people going... Oh man, I could have used them. That's a good pool. What's wrong with you? I'm like, oh, that sucks so hard. <laughs> There's nothing more frustrating than pulling something you don't need and then having a shit ton of people going, what are you talking about? That's good. Oh, dude, that's the worst thing. It's just a fucking mess. Like, yeah. Uh, that's why I don't like, like doing something that I absolutely don't want, or I'll only be chasing like one thing. And I'm like, God damn it. You know, I pulled this other stuff, but I'm trying to get this character. And everyone would be like, oh my God, but you probably reaction to units. You. Yeah. It's not what I'm looking for. Yeah. It's like that one person who said, like, uh, when I was going for GT Vegeta, the LR that I can't say his name of, um, B Vegeta. I think that's safe to say. I was going for B Vegeta in one video, and then uh, the next video I was going for LR Kale and Khalifa, and then I got extremely angry that I pulled B Vegeta. And then the person was like, literally two videos ago, you were so you were so uh, hyped up looking for him, and then you pull him, and then I got actually angry at it, because <laughs> I was like, I didn't want him anymore. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That sucked. Yeah, I was like, I don't think you understand. Um, I only wanted him for the Aureli lead, and then I got Kid Goku, and then I didn't need him anymore. And then I wanted what is perhaps the greatest female unit in the entire game, an LR. And then the one time I pull an LR, I get an unfeatured LR. So that's why I'm angry. And I can understand if you want B Vegeta, but I didn't want him at that expect moment. And to be fair, V Vegeta is very good. Uh, that does not change the fact that I was extremely angry that it was the wrong Vegeta. I also get that same anger when I pull LR Broly. Uh, the the old one, STR. It's an extremely bad feeling. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. There you go. So thank you for the question. Uh, next question comes in from Final Four Grimza, and he says, How was your day? And I'll say my day was uh, frustrating, and it made me angry. But I'm feeling slightly better now. Mine was kind of tiring, but yeah. You 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 keep you keep going forward. You keep going for it. Yeah, one step at a time. Exactly. That's all you can really do. Thank you for the question. Um. Next question comes from Hakashin. Hashtag Hive S Z N. I don't know what that means. When he I, asked. I've seen it. Oh, Hive Season, okay. He asks, when face cam for 2B released, you're asking me to buy a face cam, which is just not going to happen ever in the history of the world. Um, And if I ever did have a face cam, I would just put a whooper plush in front of it and then I would have my mic off screen and then, because I don't want to break the illusion that I'm not a whooper. <laughs> it's bad enough that... That's true. Yeah, so you got to keep that illusion alive. I already broke the illusion that I'm not a girl, so I'm going to have to keep the illusion that I'm a whooper alive. 
you really, really should have had your sister do videos for you for like two months right at the beginning and then just switched to starting to yourself instead of writing a script for her to say. So Shit would have been hilarious. So here's the thing that this is now another mod story. After it was revealed that I was a guy on on a modcast, I was planning on doing a video where I did exactly that, where it was going to be a Dokkan video, but I had a female friend of mine record the audio and then pretend to be me. <laughs> I remember the plan for that. And that was going to be the idea. Was The idea was that, like, actually, you don't know if I'm <laughs> male or female, and it would have been kept that way the entire time. And uh, it never came to be just like, just because I couldn't get my um, uh, my uh, any of my lady friends to one of all. I couldn't explain to them my secret life as a Dokkan <laughs> Reddit mod. <laughs> Some of them I could, like the, the Mew Mew Force. Um, they know, obviously, but that took a lot of explaining and they still don't 100% understand what I do. <laughs> Uh, and then also they call every single video we do together a podcast because they don't know what else to call it. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, never, basically never face cam. But that was my basic idea is that I actually did totally want to do that one day. And then it just ended up never happening. I still think it'd be pretty funny to do one day. Um but we'll see. Maybe, maybe someday you'll see uh, a female Wokey out there, and then you guys can continue having your weird fantasies. Did I ever tell you the one time when um, me and when I was doing the um, the question thread and Penta was working team builders that we used to switch roles, where it'd be like, well, he was sleeping, I looked, I took care of team building, and then when I was asleep, he would take care of uh, questions. Well, we used to do that, and one of the time, one of the times, and the first person to ever ask me if I was male or female was Penta, because he asked me in uh, a Reddit message, uh, just to be sure, are you f- male or female? And I said, I am a man, I'm a dude. Uh, <laughs> he's like, cool, just wanted to check. And I was like, all right, all good, Penta. He was heartbroken. Yeah, Penta was the first person. I actually don't know why he asked, but if I, in my mind, I always was like. Are you trying to gauge the current? I always assumed it was to see what kind of level. He wanted to see if he was going too far or something. But the second he knew I was a dude, he was like, nah, this is cool. Let's do it. And we did. And so it was Wokey's first sin. It's true. Oh, good <laughs> times. Good old times. Uh, next question comes in from Air Fighter, who asks, What's your thoughts on a potential LR warp, warp Kamehameha Goku? I'm just going to throw up the big old shrug because that's about how I feel after not getting Cell or Gohan. I don't care. I would like to get him if he exists, but sure. I probably won't. I only have like 900 stones. Yeah, I'm sure he'll have beautiful art and I'll, I'll gladly put him up on the big boy scale if he's awesome. Um, but in terms of actually owning him, I don't, I don't see a future where that happens, dog. <laughs> it's just not in it. Yeah, uh, it's dangerous territory, man. Yeah. Next question comes in from thank you for the question. Comes in from Truth Seeker Huey, who says, Have you watched the Extreme Z podcast? And if so, where do you place them on the big boy scale? Um, I don't really watch any of the other podcasts that deals with Dragon Ball. Except for no, that's a lie. I watched um uh All Systems Goku, which was two people basically watching DBZ the anime Kai for the first time ever, and it was awesome. <laughs> It was from Giant Bomb, and it was uh, Dan Reichert and Jeff Gersman seeing DBZ for the first time and coming to terms of just like, so I, it was really funny, actually. Uh, now I'm getting into a real dire diatribe, but there was a part where they were talking about Piccolo. So Piccolo puts in his original name when he goes to the World Tournament uh, during the Boo Saga, right? You know what? We know. Ma JR. We're not going to actually say what it is, right. but we know his right. original name. Yeah. And they get to that part, and they go like, for some reason, Piccolo puts down the name Ma Jr. And it is the, <laughs> he's like, I don't know what why he's doing this, but that seems pretty good to me. And I was, and that took me a moment. I was like, oh man, that's all Dragon Ball stuff. They don't know anything what happened there. And it was like the most yeah, like, they don't know jack shit about it. <laughs> yeah, so it was really that's... funny. Yeah, and th- and that's great if you have like a um a lot of love for Dragon Ball and can also accept people trying to understand like the silliness of Dragon Ball and also current 
learn to love it basically from like a like a less a more casual standpoint it's fantastic for that so that is the only dragon ball z podcast i've ever seen <laughs> is all systems goku what about you zen i can get behind that that's that's good stuff uh what about you zen have you seen any have you ever heard of extreme z podcast or anything like that sure have not I mean, keep up the hustle, man. As someone who does, if the, I'm going to assume based on that name that they probably do something Dokkan related. If they do, keep up the hustle, man. Keep going. Thumbs up. Yeah, for sure. Talk about what you love. That's my thing. So we put them on the big boy scale as a five out of five. Keep doing what you're doing. As long as you're doing it respectfully. <laughs> Absolutely. Always do your thing. That's our feeling for it. And then next question comes in from Slick Vic and says, what's a question? And uh, next question, we will go on to Rem, who asked uh, <laughs> that uh, Rem was asking about the upcoming four star ticket. I've already said it is the Goku Black of the Fate Universe. It is a Toria uh, Lancer. And then a uh, final two questions we got. First question comes in from Gordon Ward, who says, "What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow?" And I have to ask, is it an African swallow? And then you can come back to us next week if you actually hear this. And finally, the last questions comes from Josh Callahan, who asked, will Donnie do a multi? And I'll say, go watch his Legends stream where he did too many multis and could not get a Krillin. Oh, no. You hate to see that. It was a lot. Um, it was. I was there in the chat when he did it, too. I was telling him that the only way to get the EX Krillin is that uh, Frieza had to win the pull. And then he he said, you're not funny. And it was great. It was a fun time on the stream. Oh, that would have been really funny if Frieza won one. You have no no idea how hype I got when every time Frieza won, I was like, come on, please, for the love of God, drop the Krillin. He will never (laughs) let let it down if it actually happened that he got a Krillin off of Frieza laws. But that never happened, unfortunately. So that's all the questions we got for to be released. And that is another, that's an episode down, down, uh, I was going to say down the drain. That's not the right side. In the bag, in the bag, another episode goes. Uh, So why don't we end this then? Let's end it the way we always do. uh, By saying, and I'm about to lose charge on this laptop, so it could not come sooner. Um, (laughs) Remember everyone. Shit, I can't remember. (laughs) <laughs> I literally forgot the thing I say at the end. Um, uh. Remember, kids, don't play Dokkan, because if you do play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die. And that's no good. See you next week, everyone. Or whenever Bye. it gets released. It's hard to tell sometimes. <laughs>